Hey everybody, Mr. A here with a quick look at Nearpod. What's Nearpod? Well, it's a student engagement platform. Those are their words. Uh, the goal of, of the platform is to create and implement both synchronous and or asynchronous lessons across devices. So if a student has a Chromebook or a laptop or even their phone, they can still participate in the activity the same way. It's really cool in that way that across devices. You also can take control of student screens. So if you are running the live version, you take students through uh, slide by slide and you determine when it goes to the next slide. But that slide of information and activity shows up right on their individual screens. You can embed both content and activities like polls and quizzes and links and VR tours and a lot more. And according to their website, they say it gives every student a voice, which I actually think it's pretty cool. There obviously a, is a cost in your pod, but there is enough for you to play around in the free version that you can get by and make a couple of lessons, assuming they're not so big. Um, you can see the costs here, but I'm really going to be spotlighting what you can get in the free version. So how does it work? Well, you create a lesson either in Nearpod, which is honestly the only way I've done it before, but they also have a Google Slides extension, so it enables you to have a slide deck and it just inserts some activities within your slide deck, which is pretty cool. The lessons can be live or they can be student-paced, so you can run it synchronously in your class or actually create it and then push it out as an asynchronous lesson and students can work through it on their own time, which is something to think about in particular if you're going to go with like a stations model and or you're uh, trying to figure things out for that hybrid structure. It also enables you to gather data from each student. You can see each student's uh, responses. You can also push out things like poll information. So if the whole class takes it and you want them to see the general results, or you can take one student's answer and put it on everybody's screen so they can see it. And they have both content, which are things like uh, embedding videos, FET simulations, and more. Or you also can embed activities in it as well. So what I'm going to do now is take you through uh, just some of the things you can do with the free version of Nearpod. So right now I'm creating this Nearpod lesson in Nearpod itself. So it's, this is not the slides version. And you can see they break things down into content or activities. So you can embed video. You can also just uh, bring slides up. You can design slides as if you're using other versions of like um, Google Slides as an example. So you can put text on here, images, GIFs, and so on. I'm just going to cancel that so we can see some other options here. You can um, also include virtual field trips, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, slideshows. So if you had like a whole slide deck you wanted the kids either to go through or you wanted to import to there, you can. And they have these things called activities, which are a little bit more interactive in terms of the elements. So you can create a, a collaboration board where kids put sticky notes on the board and you can uh, arrange them, move them around, fill in the blank activities. You can put a Flipgrid link right within this presentation. Again, there's lots of really, really cool features. What I'm going to do next is actually show you one that I've done in the past for, for a lesson in my class. This is a lesson that I'd, I've done in the past on global terrorism, and it starts off with some information about September 11th. This is a, a VR version of the Twin Towers, so kids can see what they look like before the tragedy occurred. Um, this shows the memorial, and again, as you can see, it's a VR uh, scene. I had some more information, content, then open-ended questions you can ask them. So the kids on their screens, they type their answer. They all show up on your teacher view, and then you can push certain ones out if you're like, hey, this is really articulate or eloquent. And then from there... I had a series of poll questions where the students went through, and again, the same idea, they answer on their screens, and then you push out the poll results to everybody so they can see how the rest of the class is feeling. I'm going to skip through this just so you can see some of the other features. Then I asked them another open-ended question to come back to, to redefine what they thought terrorism meant now after all those activities. This is a video that they then watched. More open-ended questions. I had them circle the regions of the world in which they thought terrorism was most frequent and then compare that to the actual results via a web source. Um, this is another activity that they had to be able to complete sort of the last step. And uh, I also cited my sources. So that's just one way you potentially could use Obviously, that was my lesson, but there are plenty of lessons available on here, even for free. So if you go to the Nearpod library and you check free, it breaks it down. You can also then go by subject area and see what's available within that particular area to see if you want to use it. You then can copy it to your Nearpod library and then delete the parts you don't want, add other things. So um, again, it's a really, really cool source overall. Any other thoughts I have? Well, I would again search their free lessons library to see if there are things that you can use and modify for your course. Um, I would definitely keep your sample set small here. I got this from Melissa. I thought it was really cool. Uh, you should date Nearpod. Don't marry it. You don't want to do every single one of your lessons there, particularly because you can run out of space in the free version pretty quickly. 
I would definitely recommend testing it out before going live. You can be the student and the teacher on just different tabs within your browser and see what it looks like from their perspective. And I recommend going uh, live, the synchronous version, the first time. This way you can troubleshoot and sort of talk kids through it before you wind up assigning the maybe stu uh, student paced version for home. Here's some helpful resources from Nearpod, including their resources page, their lessons. They also have a YouTube channel. And again, the free lesson library is a great place to start. If you're interested in these other things, you can head to my website. It's mysteria.com for more educational tools and techniques that you might find useful. And for a quick look at Nearpod, I'm Mr. A.